Now, section 1.1, functions and limits. The limit is a fundamental concept in advanced mathematics. The definition of limit was given in an elementary calculus, which states something like this. Given epsilon bigger than 0, there exists number delta is bigger than 0, such that fx minus a is less than epsilon for all x minus x0 less than delta. When that situation satisfies, we call it the limit of f as x approaches x0 is equal to the value a. Now this sentence is uh, fast to pronounce, but it's quite difficult to, uh, to understand when the first time you see it or the second time you see it. So what you should do, if this is kind of foggy for you, is to read this slowly and carefully again and again, once, one, well, one word at a time, until your brain understands it. It might take half an hour to an hour or so, if necessary, because it's very important to understand this if you are going to study um, advanced mathematics. So anyway, uh, to demonstrate how this can actually work, Similar examples have been done in elementary calculus, but uh, we're going to do a couple more here. That is, for example, let's say you have a function example. Okay, Example 1, let's say f, fx equal e to the power negative 1 over x squared. Now, what is the limit of the function f as x, x approach? What is this? Limit of f as x approaches 0. Of course, we're going to ask 0 because 0 is the only point we can calculate. So the question is, uh, you, is you can argue it intuitively like this. The e, this function actually equal to uh, this function actually equal to 1 over because it's a e minus 1 over x squared. Because the minus sign turns into the fraction for, for the exponential function. So then you have something like this. And if it's like this, then you can argue that as x approaches uh, 0, as x gets extremely small, 1 over x is going to be extremely large. And the e to the power of a large number is an even larger number. So then if this num denominator is turning to be huge, then 1 over that, this will, uh, should approach 0. That's an intuitive argument, and it is correct. But now we're going to give a formal proof of this sentence by using the delta epsilon definition. OK, so going from this definition, we will have what we're trying to drive at is uh, to show that x minus x0 is going to be less than delta as long as fx minus a is less than epsilon. So here's what we're going to do. So copying down the original definition, f x minus a, in this case, uh, since a is 0 for us, so then this whole thing is, uh, and this is positive, is simply this function. That's all, minus x squared. And we want this thing to be less than epsilon. OK, and then you have, so from this point on, we will, we're trying to strive at we're trying to strive at this. Show the x minus 0 is less than delta for some delta. This is what we're trying to strive at. So we're going to go from here and, and crank our way down and hope that something good comes out of it. So doing, doing this equation right here, we will because it's a negative sign, we'll, go, we'll do this. e1 over x squared is less than epsilon. And now we're just going to do inequalities for a while. Now, because this is a positive value, okay, I will multiply both sides by this thing and divide both sides by that and maintain the, the bigger, maintain the inequality sign. So I'll move that thing over here. As long as positive, you can move it without having a problem. And then move this thing down here. All right. And then we are going to take the natural log. So the taking the natural log of both sides, we have so the log of 1 over epsilon is less than 1 over x squared. 
and uh, okay and then next we have and then we we're still trying to isolate isolate x so we'll multiply both sides by x and divide both sides by that thing so we will have x squared multiplying by both sides maintaining the inequality sign divide by that thing is uh is that thing positive? Because it has to be positive. Otherwise, we have to flip the inequality sign. Now, to make sure that thing's positive, all we need to make sure is this value is bigger than 1, which means epsilon is less than 1. So we'll limit epsilon as to be less than 1 to make sure this value is positive. Otherwise, we can't do the division. So, so then now we will do the division and move this thing clear down here. And then, so then eventually you come up with a value x is less than this whole thing, the square root of this whole thing. And we will set this to be uh, to be delta because originally this statement that we were trying to show is the same as simply saying x has to be less than delta. So as long as our x in absolute value is less than this particular value, which we'll set as delta, then uh, then the if delta if this particular equation will take place. So so that that's what we're looking for. So what you're doing in this stuff is just manipulate until you can see how exactly you are gonna man control the x minus x zero. And x zero is zero in this case. All right, so that's that. And next we're gonna do another example. The second example here. The second example says that you have a function f that equal to something x cubed minus x squared. Okay, and what you're trying to show is show limit x approaches 2 of f is equal to 4. Now this is a lot more obvious than that problem. If you plug in x equal to 2 in here, very soon you will come up with the answer 4. So why do we have to do this? Well, because in mathematics, we must try to prove what is point blank obvious. That's one of our missions as mathematicians. So therefore, let's do that. Now we will do this thing again, uh, except that this time we're not approaching 0. So then we have we have to calculate what this thing is. So fx minus a is equal to this whole thing. That's the function f minus the the approaching thing. Okay, and uh, and we'll factor this thing out since x of x equal to two is the root of this thing, as you can see by calculating. So we'll factor out the the x x minus 2. If you factor it out, then you end up with something that has x squared, and then etc. And then x and a number. Now the number has to be uh, positive 2 to come up with negative 4. And then the value of x has to be, um, let's say 2. And anyway, by the time you Crank around a little bit, and you're going to figure out that that's just x. So having said that, let's uh, just move on, which is now we're going to limit this thing. Since we will limit, now here's the trick, OK, to prove this. Now we will say that x minus 2 is less than 1. That's the trick because after all, x is approaching 2. So we'll limit its distance from 2 as 1. Put it another way, that just means x is between the value of 1 and 3. <clears throat> so then, so what that means is that we have, so this thing right here, we're looking at just this thing. This thing right here is uh, x squared plus x plus 2 is going to be limited by the value of x is 1, that becomes 4, and if x is 3, that becomes um, 14 by the time you crank it out. So once you get that, 
Then I can say the original value uh, that we are doing here is uh, so this x cubed minus x squared minus 4 is less than or equal to. We're going to substitute this value right here in here. So then we have x minus 2 times 14 because this thing is no bigger than 14. So, so then this is the epsilon. So we'll control this whole thing to be less than epsilon and then which means x minus 2 has to be less than or equal to less than or equal to epsilon over 14. And that we will call delta. Because once you find out that as long as delta is epsilon over 14 and the and, and and delta has to be less than 1, okay, to satisfy that equation. So as long as delta is this plus delta is less than 1, the inequality will hold and the definition will hold and we have proven that the limit goes to 4, which seems like a lot of work for very little gain, but it's for practicing so that you get more experience out of doing the delta epsilon trick. And it's very good to be familiar with it.